Hello, my name's Toby Green. I am a lecturer at uh, King's College London in the departments of History and of Spanish, Portuguese and Latin American Studies. And I'm going to talk to you in this lecture about the option uh, for the OCR A-level, which is African Kingdoms, 1400 to 1800. Now, this is an option which I was the lead consultant on. Uh, in fact, I wrote the available e-book, which uh, you can download for free uh, from the OCR website. Uh, and therefore, I thought it, I was really pleased, in fact, when I had the opportun opportunity to, to talk about this option, because I think it's a, a really important way of thinking about history in a different way, to, to look at a, a topic which, perhaps, which many of you probably know nothing about uh, before you've started uh, your A-level. So in this lecture, I'm just going to briefly introduce um, both the themes of the, uh, the A-level option, uh, the different uh, kingdoms in West Africa and West Central Africa, which uh, we look at in the option, and also just a few things about what's uh, different about studying West African history and what, what skills and what, um, and, and, and what opportunities and differences there will be for you and, and why that might be interesting for you and why you might in fact find that valuable uh, as, as you pursue your A-levels. So the first thing, um, to say is that historians of, of, of West Africa in quite a distant past, so when we're looking 400 years ago, 300 years ago, use quite a different range of sources to, his, to historians of other parts of the world, particularly Europe or North America uh, and parts of Asia, who might be working in the same time period. So most historians looking at other parts of the world that use, uh, working in this time period will tend to use uh, written documents uh, as time goes on, they might start using uh, some newspapers for the later 18th century, um, and they broadsides, as they were called during the um, during the War of American Independence, and they might use uh, published books and archival documents. But text will be a fundamental aspect of uh, of the types of material which are used. Um, for the study of pre-colonial West Africa, the situation is rather different. Uh, per firstly, because most of the texts, not all of the texts, but most of the texts were not produced by Africans. Uh, history in West Africa is an oral genre um, and it's a, and an oral discourse. Histories uh, have generally been kept by uh, professional historians, as, in, uh, as is the case in Europe, in fact. Uh, but those professional historians uh, keep, those, keep those histories uh, orally and pass them down generation by generation. So when it comes to written texts, the texts that we have have tended to be produced either by uh, European traders, and most, if not all of those texts, certainly until the late 18th century, uh, were produced for economic, for economic reasons fundamentally, uh, either connected uh, to the slave trade or other types of trade uh, taking, part, taking place in, in, in Atlantic Africa, or they were uh, written in Arabic, uh, by uh, tra uh, by so some by people visiting uh, West Africa from North Africa, and then there are quite a few texts written in Arabic by uh, people from countries in what what are now the republics of Mali, uh, Nigeria, Northern Nigeria, and Niger. But in general, uh, written texts on on pre-colonial Africa have tend to be written by outsiders, and so. For that reason, historians of pre-colonial Africa tend to look at different types of sources, a, a, a different mix of sources, a lot of oral histories, a lot of interviews uh, uh, with uh, the, the, the class of professional oral historians I mentioned, griot class uh, in West Africa, but also a lot of uh, anthropological uh, and linguistic sources. Material culture is also very, very important, archaeology uh, and art. And so the histori looking at history in West Africa is therefore an opportunity to broaden your understanding of what history is and what history does, and away from one particular view. Because history can involve many different types of resource, many different types of source, and many different types of, of discussion, of discourse. Uh, and, and the kind of argument, the kind of discourse, the kind of ideas that you tend to produce really vary according to the types of source that you're using. So if you're only using one type of source, um, then you'll tend to have one particular kind of argument, one particular kind of discourse. But one of the great things, I think, about looking at West African history is that you can really broaden that and you can really get a totally different idea of what it is to be a historian. I think another thing which is uh, different and interesting about, uh, I hope we'll, you, you'll all find interesting about doing this, is, is simply that um, most of you, I imagine, not all of you, but most of you probably know very little about pre-colonial West Africa. And... One of the things that studying history should be about is, is broadening 
uh, your understanding of, of the different ways in which human societies can evolve. Um, there can sometimes be a sense uh, when we're uh, observing media, when we're reading newspapers, of, of a certain kind of historical inevitability in the way in which certain things have taken shape over time. And that's why it's always very important to look at different parts of the world, different historical circumstances, different historical experiences, to see the different ways in which societies uh, can be constructed and the, and, and the different priorities they may have, the different value systems they may have. It always reminds us not to simply assume a kind of universal narrative, a universal a discourse based on our own experience. That's why we need to broaden our experiences, we need to broaden our understanding of the different types of, of perspective and the different types of, of historical experience which have constituted the world we live in today. I think um, those are very good reasons to, to study West African history, and there are certainly reasons which have brought me to it. So just to give you a little bit of background on my, on my own interest and how I've come to uh, be talking, to, talking and giving this lecture and, and being involved in this e-book, I am a historian of pre-colonial West Africa. Uh, I wrote a book uh, on the very early Atlantic uh, trade between uh, the region of Senegambia, Senegal, uh, Gambia, Guinea-Bissau, down to Sierra Leone. Uh, and the Atlantic world uh, up to about 1600 and to do that I used both written sources, written sources mainly in Portuguese uh, and Spanish, but I also used a lot of oral interviews which I conducted myself in those countries and, and an archive of oral histories which is kept in the Gambia uh, to provide the different kinds of voices which are important. So I've, ha I've had many years of experience of, 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 of doing this kind of work uh, and subsequently I've also been involved in digitising some of those oral histories in the Gambia in a, in, a, in, a, in, a f in a project funded by the British Library. So it's very important to conclude um, to recognise the real opportunities there are in, in studying um, this course. They'll help you to broaden your understanding of the world and your place in it, uh, the, 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 the content that we'll cover. Um, but they will also help you uh, to broaden your understanding of what history is as a discipline and, and the different ways in which people can approach that. Um, one final thing should be said about perhaps some of the challenges of studying something which um, many, many of you won't know very much about uh, until now. And I think one of the main challenges is the, the many preconceptions which people can have about pre-colonial African history. Uh, and those are filtered down over many uh, decades and there are different causes of it. And, and they can mean, uh, they can create some, kind, some difficulties when approaching some of the material. So um, one kind of a preconception uh, relates to uh, the idea of a active constructive agency or power in, in shaping history. In the colonial era, it was taken as read and assumed by generations of colonial historians that uh, that history was a process which had been developed by active European agents and in the case of Africa, a a Africans had had very little input into that kind of historical uh, change of the world. Now, generations of historians both in Africa, in the diaspora and outside and elsewhere have shown in many ways this uh, preconception to be entirely wrong. Uh, Africans had huge numbers, huge ranges of influence in the emergence of modern art uh, in, the, in the emergence of uh, many forms of food which can, uh, are grown and consumed all around the world, such as rice in the Americas, peanut butter, uh, many other kinds of, of, of food and clothing, uh, and, and, and also contributed very much to the revolutionary changes in the 19th century which led towards the beginnings of democracy. But at the same time, those preconceptions can mean that there, there, are, there are several things which have to be unlearned uh, from, from the starting point until you can get a, a better understanding of, of what really happened in, in, in pre-colonial West Africa and why that's important. So this course, we look at, f there are four main uh, chapters of the e-book, uh, four main topics, different regions of West Africa. The first looks at uh, Songhai and Mali. Uh, the next looks at uh, Congo in West Central Africa. Then there are the, the interrelated kingdoms of Dahomey and Oyo in what is now uh, Nigeria and the Republic of Benin. And finally, we look at the Kingdom of Benin, uh, which is in southern Nigeria. So I hope very much that you will appreciate the different ways in which that can help you to uh, understand the world better and understand your place in it better. And I look forward to taking you through some of those in, in the following lectures that I'll be giving.